Welcome to the Coach Brian Moore Show. I am Margaret Ann Prater, this is Coach Brian Moore. This is sponsored by Eddie Pruitt Ford, as you can see behind us. I'd like to thank our sponsors. First off, Eddie Pruitt Ford, Marmac Commercial Real Estate, the Agency on Main, and Life Church. And also remind you to stay tuned in to the NFHS Network. Watch us on Friday nights, and you can catch this show on YouTube, Facebook, and the NFHS Network. All right, Coach Moore, got all the business out of the way. <laughs> Let, let's start right here. I have a statement instead of a question. Much better start than last year. Yeah, it's better to be 1-0, isn't it? <laughs> a, a, a total turnaround. You know, I love my stats. Uh, I went and looked it up on the history of Alabama football. This was the second largest margin of victory by either team since 1972, and the 1972 game was a 34-zip win by Hartzell. That's how significant that 29-0 game was. Well, I mean, it's big. Uh, obviously, historically and tradition-wise, I mean, it means a lot to our people and our community and obviously our players and school. Uh, but, you know, beyond the tradition of it, it was huge. It was a good start and um, a start that I can't say I expected it to be like that. Um, I thought we had a chance to win the game. Um, but our kids just played really well. I mean, they were locked in and focused. And um, we, talk, we talked a lot about quiet confidence all week and, and stillness and being able to mentally handle the game and really stay locked in in our lane and outside of one personnel deal on special teams with about 40 seconds left I was really pleased with that that, <laughs> that didn't go well for that guy but uh, other than that we were really locked in I think we had three penalties and uh, we had no turnovers and to play it that clean I was just really pleased with that I, I, I was pleasantly surprised not that I was doubting but you know like you said a clean game like that first game of the season sure yeah, that, that's hard to see uh, first drive I'm gonna nitpick a little bit you turn it over on downs. Yeah. So what adjustments did you make offensively? Because it seemed like after that first drive, yeah. they, they dialed in and that was Yeah, it. I mean, we, we drove at that drive. Mm -hmm. I thought we got a bad spot, to be honest with you, um, and, and let my feelings be known in that moment. Um, you know, but uh, ultimately, though, we dropped the snap on the, on the quarterback sneak, and we were going to be fine if we hadn't have done that. So, you know, there were things in there to clean up. Um, you know, our first two drives both went inside the 15. We came away with three points in both drives combined. So that can't happen. And so there were still plenty of things to build on um, as we looked at the game. So, but we got clicking after the field goal. Cooper Lang made, you know, a really big kick um, as a freshman. That's huge in that moment. Um, and then we scored touchdowns on the next three possessions. So yeah, I, I thought that was big to kind of push the game out and establish our will on those guys. Well, I, yeah, I was going to audible there and talk about Cooper Lane for just a second because I did not put that in my questions that you had a freshman step yeah. in to start the first game of the year against Austin. Yeah, I mean, we, we've <laughs> actually well. we've had a little injury bug, you know, with, with Rye being out um, and Crawford being out. I mean, I think it could be said that those are two of our top five players, I mean, as far as scoring and production and that sort of thing. And um, for other guys like Armadio to step up, and, and of course, there were a lot of guys that played really well, but Cooper to make that field goal and then make the following two PATs was huge for his confidence. He's just becoming a kicker. You know, he was a, he's a regular position player, whereas Crawford has always, you know, since I think his eighth grade year, just been a kicker. And so I've started to develop Cooper because he's two years younger. And so obviously when Crawford's gone, now that he's a junior, we need a, a guy to come in and do that. And we actually have a really good little seventh grade kicker that we like a lot. So we're trying to, you know, space those guys every two years and, you know, take a look at those plans long term. And um, Cooper came in and, and seized the moment, really, and did a little flex in there at the end after he made the field goal. I thought that was pretty good. And, uh, but there was a lot, of, a lot of positive emotion on that sideline with that guy. That's awesome. Um, I want to talk about the guys that don't get much credit, the offensive line. Yeah. Um, I was actually jumping up and down on the sideline <laughs> when they pushed. They, they literally wheeled JT Blackwood yeah. into the end zone. Yeah. Uh, what, do you have any comments? I don't think yeah. you've seen that last year. No, and we gave up no sacks, and I think we had two negative plays. So if that tells you, um, you know, I, the 12% rule, I didn't do the number, but it was really low. I, I mean, the, the number would have been really, really low, and, you know, it's, I'm – we only do it when it's bad, you know, okay. it's kind of that deal. Uh, well, that's one of my questions uh, for Rome was, I didn't see that in the stats. So what were you Yeah, and, and, you know, but we didn't have to because, again, we had no turnovers and very few negative plays. And then I thought the, the progress of those guys from last year, watching them on film against Austin uh, last year, it was, it was bad. And it wasn't their fault. I mean, the fact was is that they weren't ready you know, for the moment, but now they are. And uh, they've got, again, Coach Prater's done a really good job. Coach Swearingen's done a good job. And Chad Gladden's done a good job with those guys over the last several years and going to do a great job with our junior high. So our offensive line is in really good shape. We've got 18 guys up there. 
Um, and we've got some depth. We feel good. We're, we're playing a JV game against Austin. We feel good about that group. Feel good about our freshman game against Austin. So, you know, we're excited about the future, and we only lose two seniors after this year. So a lot of those guys are going to be three-year starters next year. Um, so that's encouraging because the games are one up there. Last year, no chance to push them in the end zone. This year, you know, that's one of my pet peeves is when a guy's fighting his tail off for an extra yard and you're standing and watching, I got a problem with that. And I deal with that at practice, and, and Matt deals with that at practice. And so we pushed, and all 11 of our guys pushed him into the end zone, and you can aid the runner nowadays. And so we did that, and I thought that was a sign of our toughness and was really the story of the game. I, had a, I have several of the linemen in my class, and they, they said, we even got a good job from yeah. Coach Prater well, yeah. <laughs> after that Hard one. Hard that. <laughs> I know. I, I was proud of them. Uh, let's talk about Blackwood. Solid numbers, 18 of 26 for 308 yards, two touchdowns. You rushed for 19 yards. Uh, how do you think the starts last year prepared him? I mean, he just looked like a season veteran. I yeah, think. he is. He's in complete control. Um, there's nothing that he hasn't seen. Um, he can get us in and out of good plays. You know, he can make good decisions. He made two decisions that I didn't like. Um, he had a, uh, a throw to DJ where it was third and medium. I thought he should have ran it. He had an option to run that ball, and he had one other. But otherwise, I thought he was really, really sharp. Um, and golly, 18 of 26 to start, to be 70% around that number, 300 plus yards in a high school football game is pretty good, especially when we didn't throw it really any in the second half. You know, both, both teams were kind of, kind of knew the story of kind of where that game was going, and we weren't going to do anything crazy. We're going to win the football game and uh, bleed the clock, and I don't care about putting up 500 plus yards of offense. I care about winning, and uh, that's what we did, and, and JT took that. I mean, he had some options. Whereas, if you remember the Russellville game last year, he threw a pick in the end zone. We're going in to score a plus 10 yard line, left hash, and he throws a pick, you know, against a really good corner. And he's learned a lot from that kind of thing, you know, where he's not being greedy. That's what I tell him. Just hand the ball off sometimes. Okay, you know, and, and we've got, you know, our offensive line is tremendously better and our backs are good. And, you know, let's just rush for five yards instead of throwing, you know, uh, an incompletion being second and 10. Let's, let's, you know, kind of feel the game and understand sort of the rhythm of how it's going and, and understand the situation. He's really doing a good job with that. All right, and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. Hey, folks, my staff and I here at Eddie Pruitt Ford would like to thank you guys. We're in our 37th year in business, and we'd also like to thank the Hartsell Tiger football team that the preparation they put in for Coach Moore and his great staff, and especially our kids who've worked so hard in the offseason to get ready for another great season. Go Tigers! All right, and we're back with the Coach Brian Moore Show. Margaret Ann Prater alongside Coach Brian Moore. Last year, Coach, you said we need 150 yards rushing yeah. each game. We had 157. Uh, is that the benchmark for this year? Is, is that, are we doing the same thing? Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, an elite night is 200 yards. Um, and and I, I think on average, I think we're four and a half yards a carry, somewhere in that range. I didn't think our – uh, average was was great, um, but getting minimum 150, that's the deal, and you can win and win at a high level if you do so. We'd like to set that number again, push out to 200. Um, but I think that just for us, we rushed for 26 yards against Austin last year. To go to 150-plus, I think, speaks volumes and tells the whole story of, of where our program's been in the offseason and all that stuff that's gone into it. Um, and, and I think, again, for us to do that, though, 150 with two backup running backs who are good players, but Rise Not There was a really big, re really huge for us and, and provides a lot of depth for us going forward. They were, they were definitely solid. And you used several receivers and ended up with 308 yards receiving. So what can you say about the receiving core? I saw there, there was a lot of depth this year. Yeah, a lot of balance um, with those guys. And, you know, we were bringing back uh, Eli and, and Isaiah. Isaiah's third year starting. Now he's just a junior, which is still huge, you know, that he's still relatively young. And Eli being a junior two-year starter, uh, Eli's handling punts and punt returns and all those kinds of things. So he's doing so much. We had a scramble drill one time where JT went to his left, and we had multiple guys working the scramble drill and open, and he had a lot of options. So, And then, our, like I said, our offensive line holding up to allow us to throw the ball down the field, take some chances. Um, you know, the, I thought the one-on-one -on -one throw to Isaiah early, um, the fade ball was a huge throw that was awesome. early just to sort of, hey, we'll do this. You know, you want to get down there and press us, we'll throw it by you. I thought that was really big. And I thought, uh, you know, taking some shots down the field. Something else I want to mention with that balance, you know, Will Lane called that game. Will is, is now our play caller. Coach Prater and he are on the same sort of page there. So Matt will, you know, hey, let's run this as far as run game. And then Will will kind of put the formations together. I didn't have anything to do with it. And I thought that he really caught a gem in his first 
play calling experience. Well, he's been calling JV something. That was our fan question of the week, by the way. <laughs> I'm wearing you out right now. Me. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, you know, that that was one thing. Did he call JV last year? He did, and, and I've let him – uh, game plan with me quite a bit and I knew that coach Gotze had sort of been grooming him to be I think had coach stayed last year or two years ago then I think Will would have been the coordinator and so you know it worked where I really needed coach Prater to come in and be the coordinator but Will handled the passing game and so we put that together and they just killed it together I mean with Matt being on the field and him being up top and them sort of conversing during the timeouts and during those breaks when we're on huddle sideline and everything, I thought it worked great. You know, we talked about that coach chemistry at, yeah. the, at the last coaching right. show, at the introductory show, and that was that, that's indicative of, of what's going on. All right, our Eddie Pruitt Forward Player of the Week was Armadio Dunnigan. Dunnigan. Uh, you keep hearing coaches say, you know, know your role. Yeah. Stay in your role. Be ready to go when it's time to go. Man, that kid. Yeah. He stepped up and, and showed out, didn't he? Well, I, first, you know, I want to give credit first to the kids, him and he and DJ both, but Coach Orr's done a really good job with them. I mean, both those guys were not uh, one or two to start the year, mm -mm. and neither one of those guys were there Friday night. And so for those kids to step in and really have a week of prep, two weeks of preparation was huge. And I never expected Armadio's toughness. I mean, he's a tough kid. He just is not – no, he's not done that. He's not run between the tackles against a violent defense like that. I mean, they were bringing it to us, and we were bringing it back. But it was a physical game in the box, and he took care of the ball and kept fighting for extra yards. I never expected that to happen. And I thought that was the story of the game. Uh, but catching the ball in the backfield, too. I mean, the wheel route um, that he caught out of the backfield was huge. Great call by Will. Um, to, and they cut him completely loose. He was 25 yards open. Wow. Um, and he was tired. What was interesting about that play was the previous play, he had kind of gotten flipped. And so he's looking at me, kind of tapping his helmet like, I'm ready to come out. And I said, one more, because I knew what we had called. And I said, one more, get this one. And um, if you can. And I told him this morning in film study, I said, look, the thing I'm so impressed with is that you weren't too tired to execute. You know, you were gassed. I know you were gassed, but I needed one more rep from you. You know, and, and he did that and executed right over his shoulder, and JT threw a great ball. I was really impressed by Armadio and DJ both. Well, and, you know, that's one of those passes that wide open. Yeah. <laughs> Those high school kids' first game of the year, right. they're going to drop. He right. just wheeled it right in. Well, and, and JT, too. I remember yeah. from playing quarterback, um, I can vividly remember a play where I had a guy about that open and, and skipped it to him. Just one of those, he's so open, like don't miss, you know, and then you sort of aim and he baby it. And JT just let it rip. You know, he let it rip and threw a part. Because the worst thing you can do is start aiming it, you know, instead of just trusting your instincts and throwing the football. And I was, you know, again, with him being that wide open, I was like, JT, just don't miss him, you know. <laughs> it was great. It was great to see. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with the Coach Brian Moore Show. Back with our Eddie Pruitt Forward Player of the Week, Armadi O'Donigan. He's a senior, plays running back now, but also wide receiver. So, how does it feel to be the first Eddie Pruitt Forward Player of the Week for 2021? Uh, it feels great uh, knowing the other guys could have got the uh, Player of the Week, like JT, through 200 yards in the first half. But uh, being announced made me feel pretty good by myself. All right, coming into the season, you were not our starting running back. No, man. But you were placed in that role because of an injury. Boy, did you deliver. So how did you prepare for that? Uh, just listen to the coaches, uh, watch a lot of film, game plan, uh, ran behind the blockers, the O-line. They did great. And, um, just hitting the hole when I seen it. That's awesome. Uh, I know you play. I just talked about you playing running back and wide receiver. Which is your favorite? I would usually say receiver. But since I had got the feel of running back, I'd probably say running back now. All right. Hey. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You did a good job. Um, everybody loves game day, but I, I asked this all last year. What was your, what's your favorite part of practice? Probably when we do one-on-ones, just to, just to see who's the better person, like blocking-wise, one-on-ones, so who's more physical. You got, and then when we throw the ball, see who can guard, who can run the best routes. Awesome. All right, and then one more question. I'm not going to keep you up here like I do, Coach Moore. Uh, what do you plan on doing after high school? What are your plans? 
I'll probably go to Calhoun. I would like to be a forensic scientist if I can. Awesome. That's, that's quite ambitious. That's awesome, Armadio. Well, we thank you for coming, taking some time out of class, and thank you, Ms. Trussell, for letting him come <laughs> talk to us. And uh, good luck next week against May Jim. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. At Marmac Commercial Real Estate, our focus is providing service second to none. If you're looking to buy commercial property, development land, income producing properties, or a farm, call the Marmac Commercial Team. We provide service second to none. You can reach us at 256-214-2196 or 214-2227. Or you can find us on our website at www.marmaccommercial.com. All right, we're back with the Coach Brian Moore Show. Coach, let's talk about the defense. Austin had two big-time receivers, and you managed to shut them down. How'd y'all do that? Yeah, I mean, we played really well on the back end. We had some, some things that Coach Cole was really addressing uh, both yesterday and, and today. But, you know, I thought our kids were locked in. Um, we didn't let anything get over the top of us. You know, that, that's my thing is, you know, we call it capping it off. Like, we've got to keep a ceiling on that deal and make them earn it. You know, they had two drives where they drove and had threatening drives but we didn't give them anything. I mean, they earned every yard, and eventually we got a fourth down stop on both those drives. And so, or we got a turnover, a pick on one, and then a fourth down stop. But I thought, I thought they did a really good job. Coach Cole has those guys really prepared, Coach Graham. Um, and we got a lot of experience returning there too. You know, with uh, Caleb Goodwin, Goodwin sliding out, and of course Peyton Steele being back, and Bull being back, and Walker Hoyles played a lot. And a lot of those guys too, Jake England included, have developed uh, as JV guys too. So they've played a bunch of football. That was the whole point last year. Um, and so those guys were really ready to go. Uh, that was good to see. You know, you didn't give up any big plays. None. So that, that, was, that was impressive. All right, going into the season, the biggest question that I saw was the defensive line. Yeah. Because you lost three, three big guys. Yeah. And, and they were solid. Yeah, I thought Dom had, was, had a really good night. Dom had 12 tackles. He was very productive. That's a big number for a defensive lineman. Um, he's gotten so much bigger. I didn't really realize that. Um, just in a year of offseason and just growing, and um, he just turned 18, and so he's just getting older, you know, and naturally more mature. Um, but he had a really good night. He's a leader of that group, no question about it. Um, but I thought Dalton Green played really well on the inside, um, and I thought Brody Morrow, for his first – you know, real varsity action, played well. You know, he's got, still got some ways to go, but he played hard, and that was the biggest thing. We can clean up the technique stuff. The effort things are kind of, you know, you're intrinsically motivated when it comes to that a lot of times. And then uh, I thought Porter Simmons played really well. Um, Porter came in, I think he had like 28 snaps, had four tackles in those 28 snaps. So I was really pleased with those guys. I remember looking and saying, you know, he's a freshman. Yeah, he's got a chance to be a Division One guy. I mean, he's 6'5 and weighs 200 plus pounds as a freshman. As a freshman. He's going to be really good. Uh, scary injury to Peyton Roberts. That was yeah. the talk in my classes today. Um, any updates? No, I mean, we found, you know, there's no broken bones, which is the biggest thing. And we don't know the MRI results yet. Um, but, you know, I, I just feel for Peyton because, you know, he was a wrestler that came out and had a, a great spring and a really good summer and uh, had four tackles in, the, in 20 snaps he played Friday night. I mean, he was just electric and um, he's so physical to be his size and everything. And so we're hoping for the best. And, uh, but either way, you know, we'll rehab and be with him and keep him part of our team and keep him committed and um, we'll be there for him. Well, and I've got one more. Uh, you had two starters out with injuries. Any updates on, on those guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we think we'll have a chance to get them back this week. Um, you know, but they'll have to be right. You know, we're unwilling just like we're against Austin, even though it was a rivalry game or whatever, I'm not going to put those guys out there until they're ready to go. Well, I was going to ask you, uh, tongue in cheek, of course, we need to get a guru and some sage and just go out to the end man, door and man, do what we need to put do. hands on these guys and stuff. You know, <laughs> we just we got to get them going. But but no, I mean those are I mean Ryan and Crawford are experienced, dynamic guys that both could be like SEC type players. And so, I, you know, to ha not have them is, yeah, it's, it hurts. But, again, you know, when your team's bonded and, and the relationships are as strong as we've got right now and the culture's where it needs to be, those guys just step up. You know, they just fight their tails off. And they may be in a role that they're not used to, but other guys step up and pick those guys up. That's what it's all about. And don't you think last year kind of, hey, you want to play linebacker? Hey, right. you know, swapping those guys yeah. around as much as yeah. you did created this culture that you're using this year and they're they're not scared to swap around right and just responding the right way you know as coaches too i mean we get down also i mean you know when i when ross sprained his ankle in practice that was i mean you don't do it you don't say it in front of the kids but when you go home you're like good grief you know this guy had his literally i told fletch he had his best practice of his life that day 
in the very last snap, we're on the plus four yard line, on third down and goal, and they just rolled him up. And nobody intended to do it. We had really physical practices in fall camp. And just, you know, those are heartbreaking for him, you know, because he really wanted to play in that game. But again, those guys are responding. John Hammontree and his group and uh, Decatur Ortho, they've done a really good job of getting those guys back ready to go. Um, and we expect to have them this week. All right, and we'll be right back after a break. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. All right, we've got one more segment, we're done. Okay. Have more energy? Try it. Try it. He's a little bit more peppy. I mean, it's, it's all this mental stuff, man, it's got me kind of, you know. Kind of even keel going right here. All right, we're ready? We're ready. All right. And we're back with Coach Brian Moore. I'm Margaret Ann Prater. Um, Coach, next Thursday you're going to May Jemison. You're going to be playing at Alabama A&M Stadium. That's pretty pretty impressive. Uh, I know you guys just found out about the change last week. How do you adjust to that? This is not something you'd had on the schedule and planned. Yeah. It just kind of came about. Well, I think last year, if I recall, we had two – change uh, date changes uh, because of weather um, I believe May Jemison was one of them that we played on a Thursday night and so we're used to it you know you adapt and um, last year if last year taught us anything is about being flexible and I think um, you know that was no problem uh, and actually we would prefer to play on Thursday um, region play starting the following week it'll be nice to have an extra day um, it's a, a great venue we actually went over and scouted uh, May Jemison and uh, Hazel Green last year played on that. It played at Alabama A and M. Super nice. You can spread out. Um, big nice track around the field. Uh, cool place to play in a college stadium. So I think our kids will be really excited. And they'll probably love that out there. Uh, they're May Jemison's 0 and 1 after losing 26 to 49 to Hazel Green. However, and you and I were talking about this off camera, they're known for their athletes. Yeah. So what have you seen on film that we need to look for? Well, they, they're kind of a double wing look, which is in sort of a pistol look offensively. So the quarterback's up about three yards deep. It's a really short snap and the back's behind him. And so it's really wing T triple option type stuff going on. So you'll get some uh, misdirection. You better have your eyes in the right spot. And then they'll run it, you know, 10 times in a row. And next thing you know, they'll run a guy down the seam. And so that's an issue. Um, really good athletes, quarterback is electric. Um, they were really dynamic against Hazel Green. Uh, they had a hard time stopping them. And they've got some kids that go both ways, but they got really big bodies. And last year, if, if you remember that first drive, they took it to us. Mm -hmm. And we got a turnover, we created a turnover and then scored on our first drive. I think it was 14 nothing at halftime, but I thought that early, I was like, oh boy, we're going to have a really hard time getting them off the field because they're very physical, old school and tough. So we'll have to show up and play. And then ultimately, I mean, being real about it, sandwich between Austin and Coleman, we, we got to focus on today. We got to be really present, you know, and be locked in and, and uh, be focused only on this and not let our minds wander, you know, because we, we just got to be careful on that. Uh, and so we talked about that, and that's been our message. We need to be really disciplined and play another really sharp um, and, uh, football game and execute at a high level. Well, and that was my, that was my final question. You just kind of answered because I was talking to the kids about the movie Miracle and Herb Brooks, and they talk about him beating the Russians and that that was not the best coaching job of his career. The best coaching job of his career was the following game, right. the gold medal. Right. And not that you guys beat the Russians, but right. you did beat Austin really, really bad. Right. So you got Coleman coming up. Yep. How do you keep them focused and looking at Mae Jemison after they've just, you know, taken out Austin and they see Coleman right. waiting? Well, I mean, again, you got to be present. I mean, and that's been our message. I thought our kids, pregame, bus ride over to Austin, everything were more locked in and mentally steel than they've been ever. Uh, and, and then we played that way, right? We didn't let the moment be, too, you know, uh, get too big for us and our leadership was outstanding. They believed in the mission and then spread it to the others. And I thought our leadership council and our seniors just really, uh, you know, raised their level of play as did everybody else. And I think they'll do it again. I think they're going to be focused. And I think that we've got a team with great leadership uh, that is mission driven, right? And they're not going to look ahead. They're going to stay locked in, keep our nose down, and we'll just, you know, make one domino fall after another. That's been the message. All right, I thank you, Coach Moore. We'll be back next week with the Coach Brian Moore Show. We're proud to announce we're now and the Almighty. This week in Hartsville High School Athletics on Monday, 
Ninth grade and JV football will host Austin here at JP Kane. On Tuesday, junior high volleyball hosts West Point. JV and varsity volleyball will compete against Gunnersville and the seventh and eighth grade football team will travel to Athens. That is Tuesday night instead of Thursday night because of the adjustment for what's coming up next. That's going to be the varsity volleyball game at varsity football game at May Jemison. That's going to be Thursday at Alabama A&M. You have junior high volleyball at West Point. Varsity Volleyball is going to host Decatur, Austin, and Bob Jones here at the high school. On Saturday, it's all about volleyball. Varsity Volleyball is going to be at Gunnersville in a tournament. JV Volleyball is going to be at Brewer at a tournament. And Junior High Volleyball will be at Athens at a tournament. I'm Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, and I'm here to tell you about the Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. The versatility of the Big Green Egg is unmatched. It delivers big results as a grill, a smoker, and even an outdoor oven. Grill burgers, kebabs, steaks at 800 degrees, slow smoke a perfect slab of ribs, and even bake a crispy pizza. When the doctor cooks, I demand the best, and that's why I cook on the Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. Hey folks, my staff and I here at Eddie Pruitt Ford would like to thank you guys. We're in our 37th year in business and we'd also like to thank the Hartzell Tiger football team that the preparation they put in for Coach Moore and his great staff and especially our kids has worked so hard in the off season to get ready for another great season. Go Tigers! <laughs>